already not available. Alright guys, so we're back in the van. It's a Friday, we're still in Durian Bay. The weather is absolutely shocking. It's been raining all morning, so we can't go skydiving or anything like that. So I thought I'd make a little video on what it's like to live in a van with a dog. Oh, Coda here. Help. So we've been on the road with Coda for the last six months and we've been asked heaps of questions. So I'm just gonna go through and try and answer a few of them. I'm just gonna start with the first one that we get and it's usually where does she sleep? So Coda will sleep on the front seat, on the couch here, but 90% of the time she sleeps at the end of our bed. Generally, it's okay. It does get a little messy with all the dog hair sometimes, but it just means we've got to wash our bedding more regularly. All right, so the next question we always get asked is how do we find campsites where dogs are allowed? So we, I'm gonna go onto my phone here and show you. We use an app called Wikicamps. Wikicamps is it shows you heaps of campsites around Australia. And what you can do is actually scroll through even click on a caravan park and if you scroll down it will actually show you if dogs are allowed at the caravan park. 90% of the time we're not staying at caravan parks though so we'll generally look for a free camping site. Um, we've got a trip to Kilbarry plant here so I'll scroll through and find a free camp. And you can actually click on and scroll down and it will show you if dogs are allowed. So that's how we find campsites. So another question we get asked is, how do we see national parks? And this one's a bit tricky because as everyone traveling Australia knows, dogs are not allowed in any national parks. So we've come across a, another app that's called Mad Paws. And what this is, is basically a pet sitting service. So you can just put in a, a location and then plan in advance um, to actually have your pet babysat for the day or even overnight sometimes. But luckily enough, we haven't had to do that just yet. We've been able to camp on the edge of the national parks and usually just do like a day trip in um, without Coda. Or if we're traveling with someone else, they usually just watch it for the day. Moving on, so the last question and probably the biggest question that we get asked is that, isn't it cruel to have a dog in a van? And I'm gonna read off the phone for this one because there's a lot to say. Um, we've had Coda since she was 12 weeks old and all she's ever known is the van. So I could guess you could say we've raised her to be comfortable in here. And we've found that to be very true. Um, she's already seen more of Australia than most people have. She spent countless time on beaches, swam, swam in creeks and lakes and hiked, even hiked in the snow in the mountains. Um, there is times where we have to leave her inside the car, but usually the max air fan keeps it nice and cool in here. And um, it's only usually for a short period of time. She's gotten to the age now where she's um, comfortable with being outside. So we have a long lead that we can just tie her to outside the front of the van if we have to. But most of the time she's with us on our walks, on our hikes, doing what we're doing anyway. Alright, is it fun having a dog in a van? I'm going to show you these videos so you can decide for yourself.
they're so proud of themselves. It's cringe. <laughs>